Hello everyone and welcome to devlog number 16. My name is Simon and I'm the game director at Far North Entertainment. And uh, yeah, we will basically keep doing this uh, format where I just sit down with the project and check out the current build that we are, have going on. So um, yeah, let's just head straight into the game. So basically this week uh, our 3D artist interns who have been with us for some months now are leaving us, uh, Jimmy and Alex. And uh, if you want to check out some of their work, uh, we will showcase that in the late end of this uh, devlog. We have uh, put together a couple of show reels showing off the stuff that uh, they have made. So be sure to check that out at the end of this devlog. So first of all, uh, what we have been working on, uh, which you might see immediately, is that we have these four new slots here for consumable items, which I will go into more detail later. Um, but the first thing I want to show is the new building uh, mechanics that uh, we've been working on. So first of all, um, we've got some icons in here and uh, we also have uh, four categories and uh, some new building options for the players. For example, we have uh, new plants, so you can now plant trees and you can plant bushes. Uh, let me just go ahead and cut down a tree here since we need the uh, materials. Okay, so just to get some acorns and uh, put them down like that and the trees will grow into big trees that you can harvest again. Um, some of the other stuff that we've been added, what I need to first get some resources in order to show off is that uh, the mechanics for building walls and uh, floors has been completely overhauled. Uh, before, for example, when you build walls, you would have to pit down one wall uh, at a time. Uh, but now we have uh, a drag and drop mechanic to do these kinds of uh, interactions. Still need more logs though. Okay, so we're gonna build a shopping block and uh, craft some uh, planks here. Okay. So basically how it works is you just uh, choose uh, the wall here and uh, just like in games like The Sims for example, you drag and drop. And you also get this uh, handy tooltip um, which updates uh, with the wall length that tells you how much resources you have to spend in order to build that wall. I'm just gonna gather a little more logs here. Okay, we're very unlucky right now. that. Get some more planks, okay. So another new mechanic, which is completely new, is the ability to uh, build stuff uh, on top of walls or turn walls into variations of said walls. So the only thing right now that we can do is build doors, if we have the materials. So apparently I have to sheet a bit here. So I can just target the wall and uh, a door is built. Like that. For the floors, uh, before you had to um, do like this, you had to put down one piece at a time. But now you can uh, drag and drop in order to build areas with floors. And that's just basically handy for the player so you don't have to uh, repeat the same interaction over and over again in order to accomplish simple tasks. Yeah, so that's new building uh, improvements. Uh, we also have uh, a new feature in uh, consumable items. So right now we just have a dummy item uh, which does not do much. It's uh, the rock here. So the rock uh, right now has a very useless functionality. You basically activate it and uh, you will get uh, a lightning bolt in your head and you will take some damage. And uh, these effects are all based on XML as well. So for example, uh, if you don't want the lightning bolt, we can head into the XML here and we can go to item devs here uh, where we have the stone and uh, we can for example change this to another uh, XML def for um, the effect when uh, we excavate uh, rocks. And uh, <clears throat> when we start the game again, the visual effect of eating the rocks will have changed. 
So yeah, this is just a placeholder effect. The idea later is that uh, food and similar will be consumed and you will regain health and get other benefits. Okay, so I'm just gonna cheat here and give myself some stones. And now when I eat uh, the stones, you can see that we have a completely different effect. So um, that's basically what I wanted to show you today. But um, I also thought that it would be cool to just uh, try to implement something uh, live um, in real time. So uh, I have this task that I need to perform. Uh, we should be able to in the campfire turn crisp berries, which are the berries you harvest from the bushes. Um, We should make a recipe in order to turn those berries into small crystals that um, uh, I have an icon for here in my uh, downloads folder. Looks like this was made by Alex, one of the interns that has been working with us. So yeah, let's do that. So the first thing I need to do is to take this uh, icon and I will head to our XML folder here. I go into sprites and then I will put it in the item icon category where we have all of the item icons for the game. I will take that name and I will head into <coughs> Visual Studio Code. Yeah, so the first thing we need to do is to create a new item. And we'll do that by just copying one of the old items. It has uh, this icon. <coughs> sprite name, small compound crystal. We will add icon to that and then we will create the icon sprite XML data, which is here. So we'll just try to find the crystal berry seed so I get them all in the same order. <coughs> like so. So basically what this does is that it will take uh, the PNG file at this path and it will map it to this name def, which is just the string identifier of, uh, of the object. Uh, the next thing we need to do is of course to give this one uh, a unique identifier. So we will call this a small compound crystal. And we'll have to also create uh, a string for it. So basically, we don't just put in the strings right off. We need to add translations for it as well. So I will call this the small compound crystal name. And we will also have a small tooltip for it. And those reside in the string data class. So we have to go in here. Let's just put it in here. So that will be the name of uh, the item, and this will be the tooltip. We'll just make this English uh, tooltip here a small compound crystal. Actually, like this. And then the Swedish translation will be just a uh, liten kristall, okay? For the info, we'll just uh, go fast here and call it. This is a small pink crystal. And the Swedish tra translation will be Detta är en liten rosa kristall. So yeah, these translation strings can be added for, for example, uh, I think we have German. Uh, we have French and we have Sp Spanish. So if we wanted more languages to the game, we would just add them in like this. And have uh, the translations in those tags. So this would be, for example, Ein klein kristallen. Yeah. Something like that. So now we have mapped... Um, the strings and uh, the icon, it should be one by one tiles big in the inventory. And you will be able to have 64 of them in one stack. 
we also have these uh, placeholder sounds right now, but basically it works uh, similar to sprites. You put in the wave files and you create the XML uh, data points for them with uh, a name def, a string identifier just like these ones. And you can add your own sounds to the game if you would like to. So now we have the item that we want to create. Let's create the <coughs> refinement recipe. And the refinement recipes are found here. So I will just take uh, the recipe for charcoal and I will duplicate it like this. And the names of the XML files do not really matter. They can be called whatever. But uh, I like to have sensible names. Uh, RR stands for Reci Refinement Recipe in this case, and we'll just call it Small Compound Crystal. Again, uh, we have uh, different strings associated with this, so in this case, again, we will put in here Small Compound Crystal name, this time with RR underlined, because it has to be a unique string. And same here, RR. We'll just overwrite these ones here, because the string data is in the same file, in this case, and call this uh, crystal extraction. Kristallutvinning in Swedish. Extract compound crystals from crystal berries. Utvin kristaller ur kristbär. Okay. We also have to have the icon here, and that was a small compound crystal icon. This was the icon that we created earlier here in um, the sprite data. And now we have to decide how long it will take to refine one of these crystals. So this should take longer than making uh, coal, so let's make it double the time. And also we have to decide what is um, the materials needed in order to extract these crystals. So in this case we will make it so you need three berries and in order to refer to the berries we need to know what the crystal berry item def is. So okay compound rate here it is crystal berry. Like that. So three crystal berry will turn into one small compound crystal. So the final thing we need to do now is to add this recipe that we just created to one of the refinement components of uh, the entities. So in this case it's the campfire, which I have here in the tile object, the buildings, outdoors, campfire, campfire XML. And here we can see the other two recipes I already had. I had the charcoal recipe and the iron ingot recipe. So now we just need to add a string here. And assuming uh, everything went well now and I don't have any typos anywhere, when we start the game, the campfire will have a new refinement recipe. Let's give ourselves some materials, build a campfire. And now we have a new recipe here. So if I give myself some crystal berries, I can put this in here and I put logs down here as fuel and it will start creating compound crystals. And this is a good example of what we want, what we're aiming for with this um, system of XML. It should be easy for anyone to do this kind of stuff because really nothing I did right now was uh, uh, 
doing any kind of code writing in C Sharp or doing anything even using the Unity engine. We want everything in the game pretty much to be moddable in this kind of way. Yeah, so um, that's basically what I wanted to show you today. So now I'll just put on the show reels for Alex and Jimmy, which I hope you'll enjoy. And uh, see you next time. Bye.